Hey guys, today I'd like to talk about an affordable amplifier that's come my way. It is the Arilic B50SE integrated amplifier. Let's talk connectivity and sound quality and how it compares to another budget integrated amplifier. The B50SE costs about $109 USD and is the B50's younger brother, you could say, as it omits some of the connectivity that the older B50 has for about uh, $40 less. The SE version has four analog connections, one line input and a subwoofer output. For digital inputs, it has optical in, USB, and USB Type-C in, and of course the standard Bluetooth 5.0 Aptex HD. What it doesn't have that the older B50 has is it's not a Bluetooth transmitter, as in you cannot connect to external Bluetooth speakers. It also lacks HDMI ARC, and it doesn't have a phono input. Also, the SE is the standard 5.0 Bluetooth, while the B50 uses the Bluetooth 5.2. Both versions of the B50 have EQ capabilities, a power rating of 50 watts per channel at 4 ohms, and they come with a 24 volt, 4 amp, 100 watts outboard AC to DC power supply. It comes with a handheld remote, a really cute one that's quite responsive when it comes to accurate volume control. Uh, you can select your digital inputs and your line input, your bass and treble, and you can pick your preset EQs like flat, classic, pop, jazz, rock, and vocal. Uh, it has the old school boombox kind of presets and it took me back in time when I was a kid and had a boombox MIDI system with those preset EQs. There is also the iOS and the Android app called the Go Control that allows you to control volume, a three band EQ control for bass, mid range and treble, bass boost, the preset EQs I talked about and an adjustable low pass crossover for your subwoofer. Connecting the phone app to the unit was instant and seamless. I used this Arilic B50SE with a few speakers I had, like the Klipsch RP600 Mark II, the BNW606 S2, and the really affordable Yamaha NS333. To my ears, the BNW606 S2 and the Yamaha NS333 brought out the best in this little integrated amp. Streaming from my phone using Bluetooth, its tone is warm, very pleasant to listen to. Pressing the bass boost is similar to the loudest control at low listening in the bass frequencies. The sound gained some body when connecting an external streamer's digital out to the optical in of the B50 SC. It retained that same soft and warm tone that was very pleasant to listen to with bigger sonic images and a bigger sound. I was listening to Felix LeBan's album called uh, Whistling in Tongues. The bass was warm and punchy, not really super accurate or super well defined, but it was a comfortable sort of sound, the kind that helps you relax and actually enjoy the music. The high frequencies weren't uber resolving as well, but they were soft and again, very pleasant to listen to. Next up is listening to some Van Halen from the album uh, Best of Both Worlds. And the song is I'll Wait. This is not an audiophile recording by any means, but it's a fun Van Halen track with really cool sounding keyboards, reverb and crunch in the bass guitar and punchy bass drum kicks. And this track was really fun to listen to on this little B50SC amplifier using either Bluetooth or via the optical in. I feel like this amplifier's voiced 
with a softer tone so as to not sound overly bright if you are going to pair these with some bright sounding speakers such as the BMW 606 S2 on some overly bright recordings like the band Slaughter, uh, their album The Wildlife. Uh, there is this track called Real Love and it sounds like the cymbals and the drums and the vocals are really closely mic'd and that makes for a really bright sound. Here, the equalization of the B50 SE was very useful to tame down those treble frequencies a notch. And at low volumes, just activate the bass boost and you have that punchy bass guitar and drums. Comparing this unit to the Yamaha RS202 receiver, which can be had for about $129 uh, if you look it up, if you shop around online. The bass from the Yamaha had more body and heft and the Yamaha RS202 is definitely more powerful in terms of wattage but the sound is not as warm. The Arilic B50SE has a softer and more pleasant sound especially in the mid-range and the high frequencies. Also the tone adjustments via the EQ I found to be more useful on the B50SE. The EQ tone correction on the B50SE was smoother and more controlled in my opinion. So in conclusion, who is this amplifier for? If you're on a tight budget but looking for a nice sounding amplifier with lots of connectivity, I don't think you can go wrong with this Arilic B50SE. Just be aware that this SE version cannot connect to Bluetooth speakers. For that, you'll need to step up to the B50 version, which is about $150. This unit makes for a cute small room or a cute bedroom system amplifier. You can enjoy music from your phone, from your external sources like perhaps a PlayStation or even your CD player. So that's my take on the Arilic B50 SC, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys soon. Until next time, take care.